everybody, I'm Veronica with Project Food Forest and today we're going to do a little workshop on uh, why you would want to eat weeds and show you some weeds in our public food forest in Laverne, Minnesota. Um, show you some examples of some weeds that are growing here and what they are, how to eat them, stuff like that. So um, first we can talk a little bit about why you would want to eat weeds. Um, the first thing is that they're just already there, especially if you have a garden, disturbed area, or a lawn, anything that is not like a forest, basically. Well, you find some in the forest, too. Um, a weed, basically, is just a plant that's growing somewhere where a human doesn't want it to grow. So no plant is inherently a weed. And in fact, many of the weeds that we have experienced the most here in, our, in this area, in our lawns and our gardens, are plants that were brought over by our ancestors from Europe um, and they brought them over usually on purpose to eat them or use them medicinally. So um, it's also a good thing to learn about your heritage maybe and you know go back in time and why why would they have wanted to bring dandelion over? Uh, that's a good question. So we can talk about dandelion first. Uh, we've got dandelion growing in the grass and you can see here everyone knows really but it's got kind of a toothed margin here and they usually grow in a basal rosette. In the springtime you'll see pretty yellow flowers coming out of them. Those leaves are edible, raw or cooked. Um, they're a little bit bitter but actually bitter can be pretty good for us. It's good for our digestion. It's good for our palate. We just need to get used to it. Um, but they're also extremely high in vitamins like vitamin K, vitamin A, um, Dandelions are really pretty strong diuretic, so if you're retaining a lot of water, it's good to eat some dandelion and get rid of some of that bloating and water. Um, most of the parts of a dandelion are edible. The greens, like I said, the, f the flower in the spring um, is probably the best part of it. And then the roots are also edible. Usually you want to eat them after there's been a couple of frosts in the fall. Um, that's when a lot of the compounds have been turned, the inulin has been turned more into a fructose, so it's a little bit sweeter and less bitter. You can just roast them like you would any other vegetable. And sometimes people use dandelion root as a tea for a coffee substitute, um, just like you would with chicory, uh, or you know, as a medicinal tea, like I said, for the diuretic purposes and, and other things. Um, okay, so we all know about dandelion. And next we can look at, we've got, um, let, here we can focus in here. There's a couple of different things we can talk about here. So here we've got lamb's quarter and this is a really new baby one. Um, the leaves basically just get bigger. Here you can see there's like a white powdery substance on the first leaves that continues happening as it gets older. And there's nothing wrong with eating those leaves with the white substance on it, it's fine. Um, these plants are related to spinach and they taste maybe somewhat similar to spinach, not, not bitter, not sour. They're actually very palatable um, and, uh, and also a good source of nutrients. And this plant grows anywhere there's disturbed soil. You're going to see it like all over the place. So I really highly, highly recommend trying lamb's quarters. It's one of my favorite plants to eat and that's including cultivated greens. Um, so that's lamb's quarter. And we can show you, if we see some bigger plants, we can show you too down the line. Right next to it is a weed that a lot of people experience too in their gardens called purslane. Um, and purslane, you'll see it has like these really thick, juicy kind of succulent leaves on them. And then they've got like a pinkish reddish stem. And this one's actually starting to flower. You can see it's got little yellow flowers too. Um, also, when it's not wet, you'll see that these leaves are kind of glittery as an also a good way to distinguish them from there. They do have a look alike that's, you know, something you don't want to eat. I wouldn't say it's poisonous, but a plant called spurge. Um, and it kind of looks like that, but it grows prostrate on the ground, which means it just grows flat on the ground. And instead of having like these alternate world leaves like this, the leaves are usually um, right across opposite across from each other and they grow all the way along so and they're not succulent like this they're not juicy and thick um, so but you can also just google the differences between uh, purslane and spurge and you'll you'll see there's 
there's some good differences there, but that's a, actually a really good leaf. I've been to local restaurants in Sioux Falls that have purslane in their salad mix, and I was surprised and excited because it's really a good, tasty leaf. And then another plant that was down here is a plant that everybody knows, clover. So it's got these white flowers or pink flowers if it's red clover and the three leaves or sometimes if you find a fourth leaf. Um, the flowers can be made into it like a medicinal tea or just something tasty. Uh, clover is a good plant to have around. It's a good plant to have in your lawn. It's uh, in the legume family so it helps fix nitrogen and it just kind of adds uh, a good assistance to the garden soil really. It helps fix nitrogen for the other plants. So I would say if you have clover in your yard, leave it. If you have clover in your garden, maybe find some spots maybe in the in between the rows would be a good place for it to grow. It's actually a really good plant to have around in my opinion. Um, so that's a weed, slightly edible. And you can eat the leaves too um, when they're really young and tender. Um, just don't ferment anything from the clover plants. Okay, so we just went down like one foot down the garden, found some more for you. Um, this here is pigweed or like red root amaranth. Usually the leaves are just green like the rest of these. Um, we don't know if it's because it's been raining a lot that all of the pigweed in this area are kind of this lighter green color. That's not usually normal, but you can, you can still tell by the position of the leaves. Um, it's also kind of a whorled structure and it's got these deep veins. Um, and then you'll see when it starts to flower, it's got an amaranth type flower in it. These are edible. The leaves are kind of mucilaginous, a little tougher as the leaves get older. Um, but if you just look up recipes for amaranth, you'll find a lot because amaranth is a cultivated vegetable. Um, and eaten a lot in places like South America. But that's a good, I mean, some, it's, it sends out a lot of seeds. So where you have amaranth, you're gonna have a lot of amaranth. Um, so it's just something you can really utilize while you're uh, picking all of those plants out. And if you're feeling really ambitious, you can let it go, go to seed and ripen and do all of the, the winnowing and husking and all of that and eat the seeds. Um, but it's a lot of work for kind of a little reward. And then still in this area, we've got milkweed. Um, people recently have been changing their attitudes toward common milkweed um, because of the monarch, because the monarch populations are suffering and people are saying, okay, maybe this native plant isn't such a bad thing after all. Maybe we can let it grow in our yards. Uh, so, so yeah, milkweed is beneficial to the monarch if not hundreds or thousands of other insects that make use of the flowers and the leaves. Um, but it's also edible in many stages. When it is short, maybe six inches, six to eight inches tall in the spring, um, you're gonna harvest it just by cutting it at, at the ground, just like you would amaranth, or excuse me, asparagus. And then um, cook it until it's tender. Don't eat milkweed raw, you need to cook it. Um, just cook it until it's tender and it's fine. You don't need to do multiple changes of water or anything like that. Um, then the flower buds, like you just saw, those are edible. People will sometimes ferment them like capers, or again, you can just cook them. The flowers are also edible, um, but they smell really good and insects really love them. So usually people, I mean, just smell them instead of eating them. And then um, they will turn into little pods the pods are edible as long as they're like smaller than an inch long. Just boil them or cook them or whatever. The stuff, the floss inside is fine to eat. It can be like a vegan cheese substitute if you wish. Um, but otherwise, good stuff to eat. And then when the pods get too, too tough, you can still eat the floss and the seeds inside as long as the seeds are still white. Once the seeds start turning brown, then it's done. Um, and you'll just have to wait till the next year to start harvesting them again as shoots. But yeah, lots of edible stuff on milkweed and it's pretty tasty. Okay, so over here we're in a little wildflower garden and there's a few things we can talk about that might show up in your yard. Um, first of all, we've got something that wasn't planted in this garden, but Kim intentionally kept in the garden because it's delicious and, and pretty too, um, is wood sorrel. And you'll see it's got three heart-shaped leaves on them. 
sometimes people confuse wood sorrel and clover, uh, which is easily done. They each have three leaves, but you can tell these are more shaped like hearts. Usually they're a lighter green color. Um, neither of them are poisonous, so you can just try it. And what makes wood sorrel so tasty and a favorite of children is that they have a lemony flavor. Um, so wood sorrel is a good one. Have your, have your kids try that one. They'll really like that. It tastes like lemon candy. And it's green and healthy, so you can be pretty proud of yourself if they decide to eat it. And then right next to that, you'll see we've got some, some cone flowers. Um, not quite flowering yet, but uh, is this purple cone flower? So this is purple cone flower or Echinacea purpurea. Um, and it's not an edible plant, but it can be used medicinally. Usually people will harvest the roots and then make a tincture out of them, which I'm not gonna tell you how to do, but you can try to research yourself. Um, and uh, Ech uh, Echinacea is a, a native plant. If you don't have this growing in your property and you find it somewhere, um, you need to make sure you have permission to harvest there um, and that you only harvest you know, less than, less than a third of the overall population there. Um, and also, I mean, if you're gonna be using it medicinally, you wanna make sure it hasn't been sprayed with pesticides or anything, as with anything that you're gonna eat as well. Make sure it hasn't been sprayed, make sure you harvest sustainably and you have permission to do so. Um, but I mean, also just a really beautiful plant that you should probably plant on your property if you have a choice. Um, and then right next to the echinacea, we've got some yarrow, which is also a native plant and this grows in people's gardens, but also can show up as a weed in your garden or in your lawn um, because all of these little flowers will turn into seeds. Um, yarrow is distinguishable by its feather-like uh, leaves here. And we can show you other examples of yarrow growing in the grass too. Um, Yarrow is edible in very small quantities. You can use it more like an herb, really add it. Some people say they add it to their omelets or you can add a little bit to your smoothie. Um, I usually recommend using yarrow as more of a medicinal herb. Yarrow is, is astringent. So a lot of people will use it to kind of stop her bleeding. So for example, if you're out in the field and you get a little cut, you can take some yarrow leaf and chew it up and make a poultice, stick it on the cut, and that will help stop the bleeding because an astringent kind of like constricts the blood vessels. Same with a bloody nose or anything like that. Um, and you know, some people use yarrow for other medicinal purposes, which I'm not gonna get into because um, I'm not gonna tell you how to use things internally, but a good plant to have around and really beneficial for the insects too. Okay, so we found some more weeds. Um, this plant is burdock. Sometimes people confuse burdock and rhubarb, which is totally understandable because they're in the same family and they do look really similar. Um, if you see a plant in the wild that looks like this, or even in your yard and you didn't plant it, then it's probably burdock um, and not rhubarb. That's okay because burdock is also edible and very useful. Um, in the spring, You'll see burdock leaves, especially in woodlands if you go hiking. You'll see the leaves kind of before you see almost anything else, even when there's still snow on the ground. Um, and when they're really young and small and tender, they are edible. Um, and then the root is edible too. And burdock is a biennial, which means the first year there will be a basil rosette. Um, and then the second year, it'll go to, go to seed, it'll flower and go to seed. So just like carrots, which is also a biennial and parsnips, to harvest the root at a time when it's edible, you'll wanna harvest it in the first year or in the second year, like before it starts really growing. Because once it starts producing a stalk, all of its energy from the root goes into the stalk and gets woody and fibrous. Um, so harvest it sort of at the end of the first year when it's big enough to go into all of that work. Um, some people use burdock root medicinally, but it is also edible. Uh, so, and also medicinally, when you're walking along in a woodland, usually you'll see burdock next to wood nettle and stinging nettle. 
So if you get um, kind of some a little sting from the stinging nettle on your legs or something while you're walking by, um, I always just take some burdock leaf, chew it up in my mouth, and just kind of rub it on there, and that'll take the sting out of your stinging nettle or even an insect bite. Um, and it's, you'll notice it's really bitter. You won't want it in your mouth for very long. Um, but it's worth it because it does, it, it's also got an astringent nature like that yarrow and it'll help kind of take the sting away from that stuff. So really useful plant, uh, whether you're gonna eat it or not. Right next to it, you'll see another edible, which is violet. Um, this is one of those plants that people call a weed and it just kind of makes me wonder why, because it's so pretty. Um, Usually the flowers are going to be purple on the wild violet. Sometimes you'll see white ones. Sometimes you'll even see them with some pretty variegated colors like white stripes and stuff on them. The flower is edible, um, raw or cooked. And the leaves are also edible when they're small and tender like this. You can eat them raw or cooked as well. Um, have, they have a nice mild flavor and sort of mucilaginous too, which is kind of a slimy texture. It's not bad. It's not like super slimy like okra, um, but that can help um, medicinally topically as well. You can, you know, any kind of leaf that's mucilaginous, you can um, rub it on insect bites and, and stuff like that, and it'll help soothe the area. Um, and then we're gonna keep rolling and walk down about a foot because there's another weed that grows pretty prolifically around here brought over by the white people as well um, is plantain and there are two different kinds of plantain that grow in this area as a weed and this one is the common plantain and it's got the broad round leaves but you'll see it's got this is the midrib and then it's got these veins that kind of go up this way and then there's also lance leaf plantain which looks similar but the leaves are just longer and skinnier both edible, both uh, medicinal, again, helps with cuts and stuff like that. Um, and just want to eat them when they're like kind of young and tender before they flower. Like these are all kind of a little bit too tough to eat. Um, but when you see them when the leaves are young and tender, just like most greens, um, those are a good thing to eat. Okay, so we've found another one here. We've got wild carrot otherwise known as Queen Anne's Lace. Um, this is the plant from which our garden carrots have been bred. Uh, same plant, it's just when you pull up the root, it is um, white instead of orange or purple or whatever uh, you're used to seeing for carrots. So same kind of, if you're, if you're used to seeing carrot leaves, if they're left on the carrots when you buy them or growing them in your garden, um, same kind of like frilly structure here. This one has, has started to flower. So near the flower, you'll see that it's a lot more finely divided. Um, so this plant is in its second year and you don't really wanna harvest the root anymore. Um, you can still use the leaves as an herb it's kind of like parsley, um, just a, you know, a little bit. Not okay, and so we wanted to be sure to tell you um, a lot of plants, there are a lot of plants in the carrot family that look similar and can be hard to distinguish um, with the untrained eye. Um, we know that this is carrot because when it flowers, it has, it's got white flowers in an umbel shape, in an umbrella shape kind of, and then in the center, it's gonna have a little purple spot and you can remember that that's why they named it Queen Anne's Lace because you know she was she was crocheting a doily and pricked her finger and there's a little spot of blood in the middle of the flower that's why it's called Queen Anne's Lace also if you were to pull it up in its first year and you weren't quite sure um, the the root smells like carrot but if you're not sure just, just don't harvest it or um, find someone who really definitely knows and ask their opinion first before you try it. So there's things like poison, poison hemlock and things that we don't really, we don't want you eating. So you have to be sure. Okay, so here we are in the prairie, prairie restoration area of the Laverne uh, Food Forest and Prairie Ally. Um, here we've got some nettles. Um, and in this, in this area, we have two different kinds of nettles, wood nettle and stinging nettle. Um, 
and I'm not going to go into the differences of them, but they both have these um, serrated leaves like this, and they both sting you when you touch them. Uh, but stinging nettle is edible and used medicinally. Um, the, the, if you're going to harvest it, you just want to get some gloves and um, some shears cut them off and then once you cook them you can saute them or boil them or steam them or whatever that deactivates uh, the chemical compound that you know creates a stinging reaction on your skin um, and is completely safe to eat and it's a really highly nutritious vegetable um, that's eaten by many cultures around the world and uh, uh, it's a good thing to try especially if you've got it growing we don't necessarily need to hate on it so much now that we know it's it can feed us Okay, we've got uh, one more plant here growing under the shade of this tree um, is some chickweed. And this plant has little tiny leaves and it's pretty small. These are kind of, kind of heart shaped almost. Um, and then it's got little white flowers on it like this. Um, these are edible raw or cooked and they have, you know, a pretty green flavor, but they're not bitter. They're not unpalatable. Um, they're just a good addition to your salad and also it stays pretty low as you can tell in its flowering stage It's still pretty short. So it makes it makes a good edible ground cover So in closing, I just want wanted to give a couple of notes These plants have been eaten by humans for as long as humans have existed near these plants So it's not like a new thing that we're saying like uh, these plants have showed up we should start eating them now it's more like we should get back to the way we've always been and make use of these plants that really want to grow on our property and around us and thrive in the same area that we want to thrive in make use of them eat them use them medicinally and just maybe try focusing on changing your perception just enough to um, hate them a little less and love them a little more or just you know accept them as plants that that also belong in our ecosystem so um, another video is coming up soon about low maintenance edible landscaping otherwise uh, stay tuned for more and you can subscribe to our channel to see more